The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the July 1st, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you are listening live, the normal time slot between 1 and 2 will make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. But if you are listening live between 8 and 9, Eastern Standard Time, Eastern uh, Daylight Time out there, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call, 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you're listening in, but you'd like a question answered, the stock position, whatever it might be, you can always send me an email. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got U.S. equity futures pointed to the downside. Dow's up 123 points, NASDAQ 66, S&P down 16. Enemy to Russell's off about nine points. That's about a half a percent for each of these indices out here. Gold is getting schnuckered. It's down 19 bucks. Silver's uh, even worse. It's down 79 pennies. That's off nearly 4%. Uh, platinum is down 36 bucks. Palladium's off 41 bucks. Copper's down 11 pennies. That's three percent. Natural gas is trading the upside, 40 cents to the upside. It's up uh, seven and a half percent. Lights be crude trading out at 108.64. That's up nearly three percent as well. The 30-year Treasury up a half a point, trading at 118. Uh, 118. Uh, I take that back. 30-year Treasury is up four ticks. She's trading out at 138.24. So what does all that mean, or what are the markets doing right now? Let's kind of cut to the chase here, right? And then we'll go back and we'll take a look at what all the other instruments are doing. So cut to the chase here. We're going to go to what I believe for today is the most important and compelling chart. And that is coming from our 30-minute time frame. So what you should be able to see on your screen right now are the 30-minute charts for the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. What you should notice on this, or what I'll point out to you, is the TD9 count tops and bottom patterns that we have out here. Most, most specifically right now, what we're paying attention to is the TD9 count uh, top. And that top uh, formed this morning at about uh, 5, 6, 5, 6.30. Take that back, 6.30 for each of the equity future contracts. Now, what price has done so far... It's only pulled back to test support, support being that red oscillator and change line. Now, if this level holds and the TD9 count tops are taken out, so the level to be watching inside the ES Mini is 37.8875. If price closes above that, that's going to suggest around the 38.17. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ can close above 11.528, then price should go target 11.654. In the case of the Dow, the level to be watching out here to the upside is 37.64. If price is able to close above that, we're looking to move to 39.27. Now, the move may take us beyond those levels, but that would become a resistance level uh, to be watching. And in the case of the Russell 2000, the price point to be watching today is 17.0770. Now, the downside, that's pretty easy. If price closes below these TD9 count breakout levels, so for the ES Mini, that's 37.4450, that's going to suggest that we're going to see lower price. In the NQ, the level to be watched would be 11.389 and a quarter. The Dow would be 34.22 and the Russell 2000, 16.8040. Now, I wish I could tell you at 8.10 in the morning which way price is going to break, but I can't. Right now, 
what the charts are suggesting to us. So that price is going to attempt to try to break it to the upside out there. And I say that because these red oscillator and change lines for the 30-minute uh, uh, profiles have held thus far. Well, that's an interesting point. If we go from the 30-minute time frame charts here and we go take a look at the daily time frame charts, that's what's going to pop up on your screen next. Uh, what you'll see here is that in the case of the ES Mini, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 being somewhat skeptical at this stage here, but each of those are holding their red oscillator unchanged line levels out there. Now, the N2 yesterday tested and rejected both its oscillator and change line, that's the right hand, upper right hand chart that you're looking at, as well as the bottom of its uh, profile out there. So we know that support is held, support has been tested. If we go step back just for a moment and take a look at what else transpired yesterday, here we'll switch back to my uh, black background screens and we'll take a look at the index ETFs. And what you'll notice is that the, uh, the index ETFs that tested and rejected the swing point their swing points, that is, would be the Qs. So if we take a look at the Qs, the swing point that it was testing was from the trading session of June the 16th, 276.06. Now, the volume on that bar was 81.9 million shares. And yesterday, we did 79.3 million shares. So very similar volume out there. And that typically suggests what really we're seeing take place here in the pre-market. When you, when you test a swing point and you do it with volume, even if you close back above and you reject it, chances are you're going to get back and you're going to test that swing point. So 276.06 is the number. Just out of curiosity, I don't know where the Qs are trading right now, but we're going to find out real quickly here. QQQ, 276.06 was the number. We're 278.60, so we're still above that. So wouldn't be a surprise to get down there and test that level uh, once again. If we go back to the index ETFs out here, we had the IWM, the Russell 2000. So arguably the weakest of the indices out here, but yet that gave us the strongest uh, can't bust them down, going to try to bust them up message out there. And that was at the IWM, traded into its swing point. That swing point was from June 16th. The volume on that swing was 43 million shares. Yesterday's volume with the test rejection was with 31 million shares. So that's given us the signal that it, in fact, uh, does not want to trade lower. Of course, it's trading a bit lower in the pre-market out here, but that it should move higher. In fact, this could, could, wouldn't expect it to occur today, uh, but could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. We'll know as price gets into those swing points, should they do that. Now, in the case of the spies and the Dow Diamonds, they never get down to test their swing points. What they did get down to test and reject was the bottom of their profile. So, in other words, support held yesterday inside the spies, inside the Dow Diamonds, and quite frankly, inside the Qs and the IWM, both of which tested and rejected swing points with lighter volume. It's the Qs that uh, the volume is, uh, when I say lighter, it's just lighter by a smidgen out there, even if it's just a couple million shares out there. So that's what's going on inside the equity futures markets. If we take a look at uh, just here for a brief moment what's going on in the rest of the world. Well, if we take a look at spot volatility index. Spot volatility is going to be a key to be watching today. And the price level you're watching here is 2806. If you see price close below 2806, that's going to signal a rally inside the S&P 500. Here you can see the NQ holding and testing the bottom of its daily profile. Gold and silver. We get back to this break. Let's go take a look at them. They are uh, bustle. In the case of gold, it's uh, taking, it's it's testing a swing point from May the uh, 16th, I believe it's yeah May 16th, 1792. Price close below that. Well, it suggests that we're headed lower. So we'll try to figure out what gold and silver are doing when we get back to this break. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow and investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, folks, we've got uh, the charts for gold up on our screen here. We've got the daily, weekly, the monthly, and the uh, quarterly time frame. So what you'll see here right now is that price is testing the swing point here from May the 16th. 17.92. And so if price closed below that, that suggests lower price. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it appears that uh, gold is going to close below the bottom of its bull structured weekly profile. And that's at the 1835.20 level. So that is suggesting lower price. It could even suggest somebody might say, well, Stevie, is that setting up an A to B equals CD to the downside? And that's a possibility, most certainly. Don't know that it'll be confirmed by volume. Doesn't always have to be confirmed by volume. And in that case here, the 8.4 gold would be the March 7th high. This is the weekly chart we're looking at. The May 16th low would be the B point, and the C point would be up here from June the 13th. And that would give us a one-to-one -one price projection of 1583 out there. Now, before that comes to fruition, what we also see or what we should see out here when we take a look at this weekly time frame chart is a consolidation pattern. And the consolidation pattern looks like this. So here's the consolidation. So more likely than not, where gold is likely headed to, or at least that's a suggestion as we speak right now, is down to the lows of, let's say, probably the swing point from August the 9th. And that's at the 1695 level. And if price can break through this consolidation, then we're looking at a move. Then, then I'd say we've got that A to B equals CD pattern, which will be in play no matter what. It's in play as long as price closes below the 1792 area. So that remains in play. But it's really the consolidation pattern that sticks out to Stevie when I take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here. Another area where we could see support would be at the uh, center of its monthly profile. Now, that is a bearish structured profile. We saw two months, more than two months, close above the top of that. That typically says that if it's just a counter trend move that gold is in, then it should find support at the center of that bearish structured profile. And that is at uh, priced at 1764. So 1764 is a likely target. Another possible target is 1747. That's the top of its quarterly profile. So that's where we've got support and resistance levels. If we take a look at the intraday charts out here, we'll go to the multi-time frame chart just for a moment, see if there's any kind of signals there. 
here what we'll see. You'll see the daily in the upper left. It's going to be forming bar number seven of a TD9 count. Says uh, you couldn't see a TD9 count bottom until next week sometime, if that were to form. On the uh, five-hour time frame chart, let's see what we have here. Give me open this up. The five-hour time frame chart shows uh, what? And, yes, I'm asking you that question. So I see the A to B equals CD to the downside here. That looks like this. So I'll just draw in the A to B line. That's like this. Then we'll just move this over to the C to D area out here. So that would look like this. And uh, we're, we're at about the one-to-one -one level right now. So what the five-hour time frame chart would say is that if we were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a buy the D point pattern. The two-hour time frame chart appears that uh, – so it's 821, and bar number nine is forming as we speak right now from the two-hour time frame chart. And we know that bars eight, nine, to the bar following nine can identify a bottom. So what this is suggesting to you and I is that on the 120-minute time frame chart, gold's either formed a bottom or will form a bottom or should form a bottom by noon. By noon. If I take a look at the 60-minute chart, it has a TD9 count bottom that's in play. The only way that gets negated is a close below 1784.20. So I'd say I'd watch the 60-minute chart because if gold on an hourly basis closes below that level, that's going to be a signal that we should see lower price. Otherwise, you could see some type of uh, bounce. On that bounce, where price would likely first head to would be those oscillator and change lines. So we'll call that about 1796. 1792 is the bottom of the 60-minute uh, profile. 1795 is the center of that bullish structured profile. So if there were to be a counter trend rally, the level to really be watching out here is 1795. Now, that's going to be really important at 122 in the afternoon uh, if you are listening to the archive version of this show because that will help you understand what gold is going to do. Because if gold is trading above 1795.70, then that's going to suggest a move to 1802 or 1806.80. The other intraday time frame charts, 5-minute, 10-minute, 15-minute out here, um, it's the 5 and 10-minute that have bottoming signals, but price is not taking out key levels of resistance. To do that, you'd need to see a close above 1796.30 to suggest that there's any traction out here. So we know that we're testing on a daily basis the swing point at the 1792 level. That's the one from May the 16th out there. It's possible that by day's end that that will hold. That's at least the signal coming from the 60 and the 120 minute time frame chart. But if in fact that level fails, then that suggests that price will likely head back to the consolidation area, which I believe we said was about 1695, 1696 or so. And that's how gold would play out. Let's go see how silver is uh, performing here. Let's change these charts here. We're in silver. We're on the September contract here for silver. So let's get that uh, pulled up. It'll take just a moment for these charts here to go ahead and populate. While that's going on, I'm going to uh, pull up the – we'll just switch charts here. Uh, switch screens, I should say, is well, let's go take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly, just like we did for Goldilocks here for silver. So in the case of silver, silver has negated, yesterday it negated a TD9 count bottom. That was the uh, swing point for May the 13th. Price trade below profiles out there. It's trade below profiles on the weekly as well. It's trade below profiles on the monthly. So from a profile standpoint, this suggests that what uh, silver wants to do is go target the 1629 to 1810 level. And that is the uh, bullish structured quarterly profile. Let's go switch and take a look at the white background chart, see what kind of signals we're picking up here. And when we take a look at those, uh, you can see on the daily time frame, that's your upper left-hand chart, that today will form bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern out there. Bar number eight. Nine or the bar following nine can identify the bottom. So this suggests a TD nine count bottom in silver could form because we need to get bar number nine but uh, could form early next week. Now, the five-hour time frame chart right now, it ha does have a TD9 count bottom. And so I don't know, this this bar that we're currently in completes at uh, 9 o'clock for uh, the five-hour chart here for uh, silver. So um, that's as we go off the air. So whatever the low is at that stage, and I don't know that the low is, is in at this moment here. It doesn't look like it. But whatever the low is, Coming into the 9 o'clock session, you want to note that on your pad of paper. Go back and look at your charts. If price is trading below that, then the TD9 count on the 5-hour basis will get negated. And that would be a pretty good signal that what Silver's intent is to get down to the 1629 to 1810 level out there. If we look at the 120-minute time frame chart, no bottom pattern. 
If I look at the 60-minute time frame chart, it's going to form bar number eight as we come to the nine o'clock session. That says a TD nine count bottom on the 60-minute chart could form between nine and ten, uh, nine and eleven this morning. No bottom signal on the 30-minute chart out here. Uh, you do have a TD nine count uh, pattern that's forming on the 15-minute chart. Uh, so what I would be watching here, I think the most important pattern. It's going to be really that five-hour time frame chart that's got that TD nine count pattern. So right now we're at 1946, 1945. I saw a tick printed there, but just come back at nine o'clock. We'll already be off the. I guess I'll be on the air, but I'll be doing the nine o'clock update. Just to whatever that price level is, watch that during the day. Now it needs to be a close below that. So it's a five-hour chart. So you've got uh, nine o'clock. Uh, the next bar will complete at two p.m. But if you're listening to the show at one o'clock. Price is trading below that low, whatever that low is out there. As I say right now, so far, out of 8:26 in the morning, that low is at 19:45, but it may get a bit lower than that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Com. 
Welcome back, uh, folks. So as of 8.30 in the morning, we've got uh, U.S. equity futures still pointed lower. Dow, Dow futures are off 140. NASDAQ's off 68. S&P's down 17. Russell's off 8. So no real changes. If we take a look at what took place in Asia last night, you had the uh, Shanghai and the Nikkei closed lower out there. The uh, Nikkei was off 457 points. It was nearly 2%. Over in Europe this morning, you've got the DAX off 26 points. That's a quarter percent. And the FTSE's down a quarter percent as well. That's 20 points there. Gold down 20 Two bucks right now, trading out at 1784 and silver off 90 cents. 1945 is the print there. So let's go back. Uh, no questions in either by email or inside the Tiger's Den at this moment. So let's go back and take a look at the ES Mini out here. Uh, let's take a look at the equity futures uh, in more detail than we did during that first segment. And here, what we'll see. In the upper left-hand corner, you've got the daily time frame. You'll see that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern that formed out here in the ES Mini for the daily time frame. That bottom, in order, in order for so you've got a confirmed bottom. That bottom will remain in effect unless you see a close below 36.39. If you take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, you'll see a TD nine count bottom that formed on the bar following bar number nine, right at its breakout level of support of 37.45.75 out there. Now, what price needs to do if there's going to be any kind of sustained rally out here is price must close above its red oscillator and change line. That is currently printed. It will change as price moves up and down, but right now, 37.99. So you can use that as a guideline out there. If you take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, this has both a uh, TD9 count bottom. That took place yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's got a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out here as well. So it's got two bottoms. Two bottoms make it better than uh, one. No, not necessarily. Price right now on the two-hour chart, pulling back, testing its red oscillator and change line. Its resistance levels, by the way, are up at 38.17 and 38.34.50. Support here would uh, be mm, – support would really be at the price point of 37.41 and a quarter. The 60-minute time frame chart – Right now, it's in the process. Now, it's not. It's only 8.32, so we need another half an hour. But right now, you've got a bullish reversal candle that would confirm this Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. So what we're seeing right here, just to summarize the top row, daily bottom pattern, five-hour chart, bottom pattern, 120-minute chart, bottom pattern, 60-minute chart, bottom pattern, 30-minute chart. Well, it's got a bottom pattern, but what we're waiting for here to prove that it's a uh, which direction really the market's going to be trading is can uh, the 30-minute chart take out the high of 37.8875. If it does, that's telling us we had to higher ground. The 15-minute chart's both got both a bottom, a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, and it's got a TD9 count top. So that's just really confirming what we took a look at on the 30-minute time frame chart. And you've got both bottoms and top on the 10-minute time frame chart. Price right now, the ES Mini is trading above the top of its profile, 37.79. Now, there's seven minutes left in this candle session, but a close above 37.79 is going to suggest a, a retest of the highs out there. So perhaps we'll have some kind of uh, information as to what the intent of the market is uh, before we get off the air in about uh, 27 minutes or so. So the ES mini charts, if we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure I'm showing those charts, I am. If we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at its charts to understand what the signal is, it's it's absolutely trying to form a bottom. And that's then what that that then makes. So what you want to be watching, especially well throughout the day, but at 1:30 in the afternoon, the question to answer is where is that spot volatility index? So we're going to change panels here. And if that spot volatility index is below its 50-day exponential moving average, then the rally that's in place right now, or a potential rally, should hold throughout the day. So you can see here you've got the spot volatility index that's been moving a bit lower. It's trading right now at 28.54. 28.06 is the number. If price closes below 28.06, then you should see a sustained rally. If price remains above 28.06, you could see some kind of rug pull out there uh, with a movement to the uh, downside. So in summary, the ES mini charts are most certainly pointing to a bottom. Now, if we go take a look at, let's go from the ES, let's go take a look at the NQ. Give me a moment here. Let's get those uh, charts populated as well. This will take just a moment, and we'll go ahead and change the screens out here. And here, what we've got, if you take a look at the upper left-hand side, daily time frame for the NQ, absolute bottom pattern out there. So that's a, uh, uh, that's a beautiful thing. We take a look at the five-hour time frame chart. No bottom yet. There's just no bottom pattern. So unlike the five-hour time frame chart for the ES, um, the NQ's five-hour time frame chart is saying, "Yeah, I'm not so sure." In fact, the five-hour chart for the NQ is suggesting more like it wants to get down to 11,119. 
If, in fact, that's what's going to unfold, then then we're not going to see the spot politics uh, trade below or close below its 50-day expense moving average. And the ES Mini, even though its best intent is to try to form a bottom, it just simply won't be able to do that. I would think that the NQ would be able to overtake what's going on inside of the uh, ES Mini, inside of the S&P 500. However, if we skip the uh, five-hour time frame chart, we can see that the NQ is also attempting to form a bottom. On the two-hour time frame, you've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. That formed at about uh, 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. A uh, price should go target 11,572. You close above that, and then that's going to suggest a further move higher. In the case of the 60-minute time frame chart, TD nine count bottom, your price can close above 11,60475. Uh, that's going to suggest a move to 11,688. We've got that TD nine count top on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. That suggests that a close above 11,528, we should see higher price out here. We get to the intraday time frame, these shorter term time, much shorter, 15, 10, and 5-minute charts out there. Each of those have bottoming patterns for sure. Yeah, they do. And... Um, but I still, and you've got that TD9 count for the 15 minute as well. So what that is telling me, so that high, I don't know if that's the same high as the 30. Let's find out. That high is 11,528. And here we were at, uh, what, 11,528. Okay, perfect. So if you do see a close above 11,528, that's going to certainly suggest higher price. Now, you might say higher price to where? The price target to the upside would be 11,716. To the downside, you know, the area to be watching would be that swing point from June the 16th. And that level is at 11.068 out there. So the NQ most certainly telling us that it is attempting to form a bottom. How about the Russell 2000? So let's go take a look at it. Often overlooked uh, here, so let's not overlook it. See what kind of signals it is generating for us. Remember, the Russell 2000s, we took a look at the daily chart earlier, was testing its red oscillator and change line. It's slightly above that right now, so that's a key level of support. We can also see on a daily time frame, price consolidating with inside the daily profile between 1667 and 1773. Now, as the five-hour time frame chart gets fired up, it did form a TD9 count bottom. It did it yesterday as well as the bar following bar number nine, right at its breakout level of 1678. Like the ES Mini, what the uh, Russell 2000 needs to do to suggest that it is on its way to a uh, bullish outcome is close above that red oscillator and change line. That red oscillator and change line is currently printed at 1711. So call it about 17. 13 or so. If price is able to close above 171370, that's going to suggest a move up to the 1733 and above that 1795. The two hour time frame chart that confirmed a road momentum indicator bottom. I did it this morning at six o'clock. Price found resistance at the top of its current profile. That current profile top is at the 170480 level. So close above that would suggest prices headed higher. TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom for the 60-minute time frame chart. Price needs to close above 1710 to then suggest 1721. And above 1721, price should continue to move higher out there. So you can see here the Russell 2000, much like the ES Mini, signaling to you and I on July 1st, Friday, July 1st, that its intent is to move higher. We'll call it all about the spot volatility. In fact, give up that 50-day exponential average. That's what you're looking for. A signal that there's game on at Rally. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so July 4th, the weekend, going to be kind of a light volume day out there, or should be a light volume day. Uh, that's the first thing. And I do uh, wish everybody, hope everybody has a, a great 4th of July celebration. Uh, I loaded up with my fireworks uh, late yesterday afternoon. One of the cool things about being in Florida is that um, uh, if you're a farmer, and, and I am a farmer, Stevie the farmer out there, uh, you can use uh, fireworks to, uh, uh, you know, clear off the... Uh, clear off the uh, animals off of your uh, pastures, so to speak. So uh, uh, you, call me, uh, you call me Stevie Perseverance Roads. You can also call me Stevie Pyrotechnics Roads out there. So uh, uh, always a uh, cool thing. The kids uh, love it. Uh, and and uh, so we'll, we'll do our fireworks, and then we'll go walk over to the beach and watch the uh, beach fireworks out there. So uh, it, I, I haven't checked on the weather, but hopefully it's good weather for everybody out there and that we enjoy this uh, wonderful <laughs> celebration now. We've been talking. We've been taking a look at the uh, uh, obviously the markets out here, the charts, the equity future charts. We've looked at the ES, looked at the Russell 2000. We look at the NQ out there, and all of them are signaling a uh, bottom. So, what else? Uh, of course, that uh, we need that spot volatility X to uh, really give us that confirmation, that little bit of a push out there. If we take a look at uh, this chart, let's see where am I at? Uh, yeah, perfect. So this is actually the seasonal charts. This is uh, provided to me by the folks over at Season X. If you were into seasonal charts, these guys make it simple. They've got um, uh, they've they've really got some cool data out here. Uh, and that's the chart that I've got up on my screen. So what we have is the S and P 500 over the last 72 years. But what I've also done here is I have uh, uh, selected what the S&P 500 does during the midterm election cycle. Now the red line, the red vertical line is where we're at right now. So we talk about bottoms that the market is trying to form. This is all also tying right in, tying right in to what the seasonal midterm election cycle would show us out here. Now it's going to be choppy. In fact, this suggests that it's going to be choppy through the uh, early part of October out there when we typically get our normal type of a, a bottom. But right now, we've got the support um, that, um, that, that, that this is showing that we typically this time of year, we see some type of bottom. If we look at how the days trade here, um, this is for the uh, this is during the season, this is during the midterm election seasonal set of charts for the last 72 years. Fridays are decent days. Wednesdays are your best days out there. If we take a look at the performance but from a monthly base, we just came off of one of the worst uh, Junes in a while. Well, geez, that is during a during the midterm election seasonal cycle. 
this shows us our 12 month uh, periods out here. June is the worst performing month. But July, you typically have a rally going into July. Then the market starts to pull back into that October time frame out there. Now, that's what it looks like uh, if we use the seasonal cycle. We can do this here. I think this will. There you go. So I'd come back and take a look at the last 72 years without that pattern in play. And that shows that typically a bottom forms around June 26. Well, in essence, that's what really took place in the market last week. So at the end of last week, we had confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottoms for the weekly time frames for most of the indices out there. And we had those uh, same patterns form for their daily time frames. So I don't know that this is the uh, chart that is in play out here. I think it's more the midterm uh, election uh, cycle that we've got here. And uh, uh, so, uh, so we should expect, we should anticipate, or the market typically rallies. Now, whether it's going to or not is another thing, but we'll just simply take things one step at a time. So I'd mentioned earlier that the 30-minute charts are what we really want to be watching today, just trying to simplify things for you. Here happens to be a 30-minute um, market breadth chart uh, that takes a look at the S&P 500. And right now, as of 8.46 in the morning, we have 180 instruments that are trading above the top of their 30-minute profiles. When you trade above the top of a profile, one, it doesn't tell us whether we've got a topping signal or not, but when you're trading above the top of a profile, you've broken through resistance. You break through resistance, it's considered to be bullish out here. You break through the bottom of a profile, it's considered to be bearish. So we'll just call that directionally speaking. Here we can take a look at the market breadth we can, and, and simply point to different crossovers. Well, here what we've got is a bullish crossover because there's 106 instruments that are trading below the bottom of their profile. And there's 181 that are trading above the top of their profile. So now if we go back and we take a look at the ES Mini as we speak out here. So go back to that chart. We're just going to try to flip back and forth out here. Here if we take a look at the ES Mini, I'll just simply make that the only chart we're looking at on our screen right now. I hope that's the only chart we're looking at on our screen. That actually makes sense that we had that bullish crossover. That bullish crossover took place at 8.30 this morning. And at 8.30 this morning, what Price was doing, this is where my crosshair is right now, Price was pulling back and testing that key level of support, and that was that red oscillator and change line. So that level is held. We can see that price is trading into its swing point from 6.30 this morning out there. And again, a close above that TD9 count high. It's a close above the high, which is 37.88.75. That's then going to signal at least to move to the 38.17 area. And a close above that says that we uh, rally even further. So that's coming from the 30-minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. Let's go switch back to my uh, TAS market profiles for the 30-minute time frame. The only two indices that I can uh, generate this for are the S&P 500 and the, uh, and the NDX 100, or the NQ out here. So now if we take a look at the NQs, we will see also, again, this is the 30-minute time frame chart. Let's let this populate. So now what we know is, uh, well, this actually says it has a bullish crossover. But if I take a look at the actual statistics above, the market breadth statistics, and those are typically more correct, we've got 32 above and 38 below. So that's not, you know, and what we need to see here is we need to see if, in fact, this rally is going to sustain itself. And it's certainly the signals. Right now, the NQ is saying, yeah, I'm not so, uh, not so sure that I'm ready to make that run and take out its TD9 count top. At least that's the message as we speak at uh, 848. Let's go back and take a look at its charts out here. So let's go change the uh, screens. We'll go back. Whoops, that was the wrong screen. Sorry. How do I do this here? Screen. Change windows. Let's get back to the proper window out here. And now it's the 30-minute uh, chart for the NQ that we're going to uh, look at. Um, so I, I, it doesn't have that, that positive market breadth, bullish market breadth uh, that we're looking for. But, um, yeah, I don't know really what else to comment on that. Uh, there, I don't know that there is anything else for me to comment. It's just not supporting that idea that it's getting ready to take out that TD9 count top. So maybe the NQ is signaling to us that instead it's ready to try to test that support level again, which is about 11,457. And if price closes below that, we'd look at a move to 11,389 to 11,417. Now, it's only those 30-minute charts, so it's only really the 30-minute ES. So it kind of makes sense, right? When we took a look at the charts here, the ES were very clearly 
um, articulating to you and I, communicating to you and I that it wants to form a bottom. But it's really going to be all about the NQ out there. So maybe what we should do is spend a little time taking a look at some of those charts that really power the NASDAQ 100. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Let me just check, though, make sure that I don't have any requests out here by email. I don't think that I do. Uh, it's uh, pretty quiet in the uh, den out there. So, um, uh, but I just want to make sure. No, we do have one request out here, and that's coming from uh, from uh, Brent in Martinez, California. So we're definitely going to go take a look at his request out here. He says, good morning, Steve. Can you please go through the same exercise on the Dow equity future contract as I did for the others? Have a great day and a great weekend. So absolutely. So we will do that to close out the uh, show for Brent in Martinez, California. We'll go take a look at the Dow equity future contract and see what its charts are communicating you and I. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow Equity Futures off 83 S&P, down about 9. NASDAQ off 36. Russell is down about uh, 5 points out there. It is 8.54 in the morning if you are listening li at uh, listening at the normal programming time. And I do want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Let's go take a look at those uh, Dow Equity Future contract charts out here. So in the case of the Dow on a daily time frame, this formed a buy the D point pattern. It did it with that Three River Morning Star. That pattern remains in effect unless price closes below that pattern. That would be 29639 we can see price pulled back as Tesla rejected that red oscillator and change line. That would signal that price should make a run for that 31,354 level. In the case of the five hour time frame chart, what we don't have out here is a bottoming signal, much like the uh, we do in the ES and we do in the Russell 2000. But if we take a look at the two hour time frame chart, Brent, you've got a TD9 count bottom that formed yesterday <laughs> that's uh, been in place out here at uh, 10 o'clock yesterday morning. If you take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, what do we have out here? At this stage here, not much. So I don't see a pattern there. Uh, we did have a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute chart for the Dow. That says, again, watch the high. That high is going to be the high of uh, 37.67. If price closes above that, that tells us that uh, we should see a further move higher. That further move higher, let me see what the 30-minute chart reflects. So the 30-minute chart says you should then move up to the recent highs from about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on June the 30th. And that would be up at about the 39.65 level. So that's the message of the 30-minute time frame chart. 15-minute, 10-minute five minute they've all got bottoming patterns out there they have some topping signals as well uh the 10 minute for example a td9 count top the five minute roads momentum indicator top out there so it just says that the highs are really important that's really what uh, how we began the show take a look at the 30 minute time frame out there and if price closes above those td9 count tops then we're headed higher and if price closes below 3422 inside the dow equity future contract well then likely it's not going to be a very good start of the day for July 1st. So I don't expect that much in the way of fireworks today out there with it being a light volume day. But folks, stay tuned. We've got some great programming up next. If you're listening to this show at 1 o'clock, David White, your favorite polar bear is up. If you're listening right now live. It's Tommy O'Brien with the Morning Market Kickoff. Have a fantastic 4th of July. We'll see you on Thursday.